For those in Korea interested in German culture, the Goethe Institute Korea is the place to check out. From offering a diverse range of German language courses to various art projects, exhibitions, and even debates, the Goethe Institute Korea is bridging the cultural gap between Korea and Germany. In light of the institution's 50th anniversary, the head of Goethe Institute Korea, Mala Stukenberg, is on Heart to Heart to tell us many other exciting projects in the pipeline. Joining us today on Heart to Heart is Ms. Mala Stukenberg, director of the Goethe Institute in Korea, a cultural institute which acts as a bridge to connect Korea and Germany. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Would you like to say hello to our viewers that are watching? Sure. Thank you, first of all, for having me on this show. And it's really a great opportunity to be here and uh, to introduce the work of our institute, the Goethe Institute Korea, to a broader audience. And um, let me also mention that I really love the motto of this show, Heart mm. to Heart, because I think this is already very close to what we are doing, promoting direct contact and cultural exchange. Very nice comment. <laughs> Uh, now, I understand that this is a very special year, so I would like to first of all start off by saying congratulations on the 50th anniversary of the Institute in Korea. Could you tell us about the importance of this very significant year? Yes, I'd love to actually. Um, the Goethe Institute was founded in 1968, so indeed it's now 50 years that we celebrate in this country. And I think these 50 years in Korea have given us the opportunity to really build up um, connections and trust and confidence and have so many creative programs with partner institutions, with artists, with experts in this country. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a very good experience to look back at these 50 years and see what all has happened to celebrate and to, of course, also think about What's next? Yes, and I heard that you are preparing a very uh, special project on the occasion. So could you tell us about the yeah, project? And actually, its it's a, it's a year-long project ah. and it all started recently, actually, in February, um, when the uh, president of the Federal Republic of Germany, Frank-Walter Steinmeier, mm -hmm. he came to Korea because of the Olympics uh, to be here for the opening. But uh, this was also an opportunity to invite him to our institute. So this marked, uh, so to say, the beginning of yes. our celebration. Mm -hmm. And just recently, um, last week, in fact, we had a big party at our institute. So we invited many of our long-term partners uh, who celebrated with us. And the highlight of this evening was a Pansori show. And I, I think this was very, very special because it also connected both our cultures, the Korean culture, the Pansori is mm -hmm. a traditional art form, with Germany because we uh, suggested a fairy tale from Germany, Die Regentrude mm -hmm. by Theodor Storm, to the Pansori artists and they performed a German fairy tale, but in the Korean art form of Pansori. And this was very touching. Oh, how interesting. 제가 오늘 들려드릴 이야기는 독일 작가 테오드르 슈트룸의 옛날 이야기 레겐트루데입니다. 이 이야기의 배경이 되는 마을에는 무려 3년 동안 단한 번도 비가 오지 않았다고 합니다. 비를 내려주는 신인 레겐트루데가 언제부턴가 잠들어 버렸기 때문이라죠. 그리고 그 틈을 타서 불의 요정인 포이어만이 마을에 지독히도 심한 가뭄을 불러일으켰다고 합니다. 저렇게 진다고 찾아볼 수 없군요. 왜 있잖아요. 
So, you know, generally, um, cultural, I guess, centers uh, are known to be responsible for carrying out arts and cultural activities of respective embassies. And I'd like to know um, what the Goethe Institute uh, mainly focuses on. What, mm -hmm. what are its main responsibilities? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the main field, so to say, are mm -hmm. promotion of German language and fostering cultural exchange. Mm -hmm. But to come back to your first uh, comment about the connection with the embassy, mm -hmm. I would like to point out that it's a little different in our case. Uh, because the German Institute, the Goethe Institute, works independently. Um, and to explain this briefly, it has to do with German history. Mm -hmm. Because after the end of Second World War, it was very obvious that Germany needed an independent cultural institute mm -hmm. to build up trust and confidence again after all what had happened uh, in those decades. And that is why we work independently although, of course, we have a very close connection with the embassy and uh, we, we inform the embassy and we have uh, a very good relation with the embassy. Mm -hmm. But it's not that we are, so to say, part of the embassy. Oh, I see. This is a little different mm -hmm. from some of the other um, cultural institutes. Mm -hmm. So would it be okay to say that the Goethe Institute in Korea is the place for anyone who's interested in uh, German culture to visit? Uh, to I hope to so, <laughs> I hope so. I think uh, it's not the only place, but mm -hmm. uh, definitely I would say we are uh, an important place mm -hmm. and uh, we are very accessible, very open, and um, we organize many programs. And I think uh, if somebody really wants to get a picture of contemporary Germany mm -hmm. beyond stereotypes, then definitely uh, visiting us would be worthwhile. Now, could you tell us about some of the ongoing projects at the Institute at the moment? Sure. Um, actually, to begin with, just this morning yes. um, I attended a press conference um, together with ARCO where we introduced um, a project um, in Heidelberg. It's mm -hmm. a theatre festival and the Goethe Institute was instrumental in supporting the presentation of South Korean theatre plays in Germany. That's mm. upcoming now in April. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, uh, this also explains a little bit that we do not only represent German culture in our guest countries, but that we also try to connect artists from both sides and also help and support to bring projects and artists to Germany. Mm -hmm. This was just one example. Oh, okay. Feel free to mention um, more if you would like. Well, yeah. uh, also upcoming now is the Asian Composers uh -huh. Showcase. That's yes. also a long-standing cooperation with uh, TIMF, the Tonyong International Music Festival mm -hmm. in Tonyong, obviously. And we are organizing uh, for the sixth uh, time already an Asian Composers Showcase where mm -hmm. we invite young Asian composers, not only from Korea, but from the East Asian region, to send in new compositions. And um, this is also very much in line with projects which we actually did since many years, like promoting contemporary mm -hmm. and new music. Yeah, it sounds like you're keeping yourself very, very we busy are very with busy, these projects. Indeed. <laughs> um, but if you could uh, maybe tell us about the most memorable project that you have worked on, uh, say, for example, you've worked on numerous projects. Uh, at the Institute in the past years in Korea. And of the numerous projects that have been carried out, which would be the most memorable mm -hmm. for you? Wow, <laughs> what a question. Mm. Okay, I think a very memorable program for me was being Faust Enter Mephisto. Mm -hmm. That's a game which uh, was developed by the Korean game developer Nolgong, Peter Lee. Uh -huh. uh, but we gave a lot of support, of course, and it was a cooperation. And um, the result is a very interesting game to mm. play. And why is it so interesting or memorable? I think because it contains analog elements where people really meet mm -hmm. and play together. But at the same time, it contains digital elements. Oh, and uh, this is a really great game and uh, from Korea it traveled to Germany and to many other countries mm -hmm. and it's uh, still actually ongoing because uh, 
Yeah, maybe because of this digital elements, mm -hmm. and this is anyway um, an issue which in interests us a lot, especially here in Korea, because uh, as we all know in Korea, many things in this field are being developed, mm -hmm. so we try to use them and to also integrate them into what we are doing and programming. I see. Being Faust, Enter Mephisto is a groundbreaking game co-created by the Goethe Institute Korea and a Korean company. A modern interpretation of Faust that suits the 21st century social media age that we're living in now. The game, enriched with online and social media elements, helps people living in a busy and complicated world look back on their life once again. 소설책의 주인공이 돼서 우리의 욕망을 충족시켜 보는 욕망이 뭔가 충족되는 것 같은 제가 조그매져서 책 속에 막 왔다 갔다 이리저리 다니는 느낌이었습니다. 어, 파우스트라는 단 하나의 책 안에서 온 다양한 가치들이 많이 담겨져 있다는 게 어, 굉장히 흥미로웠고 한번 읽어보고 싶다는 생각을 하게 됐습니다. So now, now, now that we've talked about the numerous projects and the programs, I'd like to talk a bit more about the services provided mm -hmm. by the Goethe Institute in Korea. So we have actually um, prepared three photos mm -hmm. for us to look at, and then uh, we'd like you to maybe give us the details and explain to us what the photo is about. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a look at the first photo here. It looks like I've seen a 3D printer before, and this looks like a 3D printer. Yeah, yeah, is this correct? is the 3D printer in our library, indeed. Oh. And um, maybe it's a little bit surprising. Why is there a 3D printer mm -hmm. in a library? Yes. But, um, you know, this has to do with uh, new library concepts, actually, mm -hmm. um, especially in Germany, but in many other countries, and I think as well in Korea. Libraries are no longer this secret place, yes. very silent, uh -huh. nothing is happening, only browsing books, nothing else. There are so many media nowadays in, in libraries and we believe a library can and should at certain times even be a meeting point where people can engage with each other. Mm -hmm. And so this brought us to this idea to have the 3D printer in our library. And uh, yeah, the library is open and accessible to anybody um, at almost any times, not mm -hmm. 24 hours, <laughs> but uh, every weekday, for example, and on weekends as well. This just reminds me something is lying here on our table as <laughs> yes, well. Yes, we do have three items here. <laughs> we have three items here, and uh -huh. these were actually printed by um, visitors and students of our institute um, when they visited the library and mm -hmm. they discovered the 3D printer. Wow. So one of them printed the Goethe Institute. Yes. One of them just opted for a piece of cheese. Cheese? <laughs> <laughs> a white piece of cheese. <laughs> exactly. So it's quite uh -huh. funny but uh, entertaining. Yes, and we have a yellow or orange star <laughs> uh, on the table as well. So these were all printed through uh, the 3D printer. Yes. It's amazing how a printer would actually do this. Yeah, you can even print churches and buildings and oh, whatever, and even fashion. So fashion. it becomes very important in this field of design mm -hmm. and uh, fashion as well. And um, yeah, and the library contains many different media, of course. Mm -hmm. And the library is also the place where we have uh, much more than books. And uh, from the library, we also have activities like uh, translation projects, mm -hmm. workshops, and translations, of course, play a, a major role. And um, maybe I should tell you about one of the really cutting edge translation projects. Yes, yes, please. Which is uh, right now in the making, so to say. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, I brought a book, I show it to you. Yes. Um, there is this novel by Thomas Melle, a very remarkable book, Die Welt im Rücken. And um, we have now a cooperation with um, a digital platform, mm -hmm. the Lectory platform. And we invited 10 translators from different countries oh. to translate this book 
simultaneously into, into their respective languages. Mm -hmm. And the 10 translators, as well as the author, Thomas Melle, they are connected via the lectory platform. Mm -hmm. This means the translator is no longer alone all the time, mm -hmm. but he is connecting with others and they are sharing their questions and their remarks and the author is putting in additional information. And we are very interested to see the outcome of mm -hmm. this uh, process um, and the results will of course be presented then, for example, in Seoul, during the International Book Fair, mm -hmm. but also this year in Frankfurt at the International Book Fair. And uh, this is also, as you asked me about uh, ongoing projects, yes. one of the events. Okay, let's take a look at our next photo. It's our second photo here. Uh, it looks like a smartphone application. Could you tell us about this? Yeah, the smartphone application is just one example for new innovative teaching and learning methods mm. actually because people nowadays they are so busy so not everybody has the time and the energy to visit our standard courses on site yes. at our institute so um, using applications or other um, possibilities can help to learn a foreign language mm -hmm. And um, as the Goethe Institute is always exploring new teaching methods and cutting edge learning methods, uh, we really tr uh, try to offer many possibilities and create different kinds of access mm -hmm. to, to learn our language. So for example, not only the on-site courses, but the applications, also blended learning, mm -hmm. where you have a mix of uh, on-site learning, but also some offline oh, learning. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. uh, so these possibilities can then help and create better access to learn the language. Mm -hmm. Sounds exciting. Okay, and we have our final photo, our third photo. Okay, this, uh, you did mention on-site courses. Yes. Uh, and it very much looks like a course uh, these children exactly. are taking. Uh -huh. Exactly, This is in our institute, in mm -hmm. one of the classrooms. You can also make out that uh, we have um, innovative um, equipment, like the smart boards and mm -hmm. so on. And uh, yeah, here we have the standard, one of the standard courses, which we offer in all the different levels from the beginner level to intermediate to advanced ah. level within the European framework of mm -hmm. uh, languages and certificates. Yeah, and we have per year we have about, um, in Korea we have about 5,000 students, but they do not learn all of them in Seoul. Some of them are in uh, our other smaller centers mm -hmm. in, Bu in Busan, Guangzhou, mm -hmm. Daegu and, and Daejeon. Do you want to know another way to enjoy the Goethe Institute Korea? Use their German language app to make language learning much more fun. And you can learn German anytime, anywhere. Now I'd like to ask your opinion about the issues regarding the Korean Peninsula. Uh, there will be two summit meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, they're due to be held in April mm -hmm. as well as May, respectively. Mm -hmm. It's the Inter-Korean Summit and the North Korea-United States Summit meeting. So uh, Germany has experienced a very similar history in terms of separation and unification. So how do you feel um, about these summit meetings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think this is a very, very relevant topic. And uh, when I first heard about these summits coming up, um, I thought it was very surprising. Mm -hmm. Nobody expected it. Mm -hmm. Because when I came to Korea in 2016, the situation was so tense. And um, I think everything which can somehow help to come out of this tension mm -hmm. um, is really an important step. And I so much hope that these summits will bring about change. Um, 
altogether the geopolitical and the geostrategic situation is of course very, very complex. Mm -hmm. But I strongly believe that actually only uh, diplomatic talks uh, can help to overcome this situation. Um, and I so much hope that it really bring, will bring about uh, change. Yes. Now, the Berlin Wall stood for more than 28 years, but it uh, just came tumbling down in just a matter of hours. That's how people uh, explain it. So. I'm wondering what it was like for Germans. Uh, what was it like? How did they feel about it? How did they once feel? About, how did they feel about the once unthinkable occasion? Mm -hmm. And do you remember the moment as well? Of course, yes. of course, I do remember mm. it very well. I was a st still a student at that time in in Freiburg, and um, yeah, it was an amazing day. And as you say or just said, it felt as if it was crumbling down in just a matter of mm. hours. But of course, it started all much, much earlier. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were many meetings in the background and uh, many social developments and so on, which finally led to the fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, but it really felt uh, as if it was crumbling down in a moment. And of course, it was a very happy moment for all of Germany and in your previous questions mm -hmm. you referred to the situation Korea and Germany and indeed I mean both of us uh, Germany was a divided country Korea still is a, a divided yes. country and in our work at the Goethe Institute many of our guests of course refer to this uh, similarity mm -hmm. and um, I believe if it was possible in Germany nobody expected it but mm -hmm. it happened why shouldn't it be possible for Korea that's true why not? We hope to see that happen very soon for Korea as well. Uh, are you preparing anything or working on anything special, uh, the Institute of course, uh, regarding the atmosphere? Yeah, yes we do. Um, I mentioned earlier that we had this being Faust game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, this experience was really very, very positive. So we want to go on with developing serious games. Mm. So. On the one hand, it's, it's a game. On the other hand, it uh, contains serious content. And the next project which refers to this issue is the project which we call Border, but mm -hmm. this is just a working title. And uh, we hope to develop a game again together with uh, Nolgong, the ga Korean uh, game developer, um, where we refer to the Berlin Wall mm -hmm. and to the DMZ. Ah. And we are now in this research phase where uh, a lot of input comes from Germany on the historical facts. Mm -hmm. Time just flew by very quickly <laughs> and we're down to our very final question. Uh, I'd like to ask about your aspirations, your goals, the goals that you hope to achieve mm -hmm. uh, during the remainder of your term here in mm -hmm. Korea. Mm -hmm. Well, I think as it is our anniversary year, um, I would like to use this opportunity to strengthen the ties which mm -hmm. we have built up. Um, and I would like to improve the visibility of our institute because our location is on the Namsan mm. and there are buses going to yes. our institute, but still some people might feel, oh, it's on Namsan. Uh, so visibility, accessibility, I would like to improve the these two uh, features actually mm -hmm. of our institute and uh, yeah, intensify and maybe do more of experimental projects where we have these digital elements uh, included and of course keep up the pace mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and have a good teamwork also on, uh, in our institute with, with my colleagues. Yes, you did mention that uh, the Institute Goethe Institute is located uh, Namsan. It's a beautiful area. Yeah, that's right. A beautiful view of the entire city or of the yes. main. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful place to visit. So I would definitely recommend our viewers that get the opportunity to check it out. And um, also, I would like to thank you for giving us this opportunity to learn about the Institute. And congratulations once again on the very significant 50th anniversary of the establishment of the Goethe Institute. Korea. Thank you so uh, much. We wish you the best of luck in all of your future projects. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.